This applet gives you a very visual sense of what R squared is all about, so I want to go through it briefly with you. First of all, the data that you're seeing here are a variety of foot lengths and their corresponding heights of the people. And here's the scatter plot of the data. So you have foot length along this axis from small to large, and then height along the vertical axis. And if you were going to describe this data, we'd probably begin by saying that the direction is positive because the slope is up to the right. Also, it looks like it is linear because I don't see any curvature really to the data. And then also I would say it's fairly strong. In a few moments we're going to put on the regression line and most of the data seem to lie close to that line. And then I don't see any influential points. Um, influential points are points that are far left or far, far right that might be really changing the slope of this line or controlling it. And I don't see that here. Okay. Let's now move on and take a look at the height data. As you can see, there is somebody who's quite short, somebody who's quite tall, and we have a whole variety of heights in between. And if we want to get a handle on the variety of those heights, what we could do is this. We could put a movable line, is what they call it here, but we could put a horizontal line along the, the average height, and the average height here turns out to be 67.5. So you can see that we have some people who are shorter than the average height, some people who are taller than the average height. And if we want to get a handle quantifiably on that variety, we could look at the um, residuals. And you can see that some people have negative residuals, some people have positive residuals, and the variance is the square of those residuals. And we can see that by actually putting squares on each of the residuals. And if we added up the areas of all those squares, the grand total right, is down here. It's 475. 0.75 units. All right, now that's if we don't use a regression at all. We haven't talked about foot length at all. If we incorporate foot length, then we're going to end up with a regression line. And here's the regression line. And its equation is down here. You can see it has a y value of, or y intercept of 38.3 and a slope of 1.03. And if you wanted to see the residuals now, I'll put them on the screen. And you can see that these residuals now are a lot smaller than they used to be. And in fact, the squares of the residuals are also a lot smaller than they used to be. You can now see that the, all the areas of all those squares is only 235, whereas it was 475. So now I'm going to put both the before and after on the screen. It'll be very busy, but you can see now that you have a whole bunch of red squares, which total 235, and a whole bunch of blue squares, the total 475. And if you look at that reduction, it looks like our regression line has reduced the variance by a little more than half. And that's what R squared is giving you. So I'll go to the next screen, and you can see down here that R squared is a little more than half, 50.6%. And of course, once you know R, you can then go and get um, the correlation coefficient by square rooting it. And the correlation coefficient is 0.711. So it's a fairly strong correlation, but not a perfect one, because a perfect one would be 1. And you'll often hear a regression line referred to as the least squares regression line. And that's exactly what it's doing. It's creating a slope and a y-intercept so that the sum of these red squares is as small as possible.